presented by Phoenix Rising. Welcome to our Don't Get Caught in the Dark video on how to be seen or not by night vision and thermal. Hi and welcome to our Don't Get Caught in the Dark video. Uh, what this video is about, who's it for? Uh, first off, who's it for? This is for a lot of different uh, people. It's an informational video. Uh, what we're talking about is using night vision technologies, thermal technologies in the dark and how different materials can either assist or foil these devices ability to perform. So if you're uh, search and rescue, law enforcement, military to where you may be out in the field using this gear to try and find somebody who's hurt or injured in, at night or you're out in the field in a combat environment and you're, you either need to hide from this sort of stuff or be aware that people can hide from all of this as well, then this might assist you in staying alive. Uh, if you're a regular person who's just likes to go out in the woods and out camping, hiking, maybe out into the national wilderness areas, and you might be a candidate who needs to be rescued someday, Keep some of this stuff in the back of your mind. If there's things you can wear, things you can do, and some things that you're likely to have and use that maybe will inhibit your ability to be found should that need arise. So lots of good information. Uh, let's talk real quick. Three, three items we're going to be using out in the field. We have a Sightmark Wraith Digital Night Vision Scope. Uh, we have a Armasite Vulcan Gen 3 Alpha Manual Gain Night Vision Scope. And we have a Bearing Optics Super Hogster thermal night vision scope. So uh, we're going to be using all three of these on a starlit night with 850 and 940 illuminators to show how these apply and these actually have a big impact on all this sort of stuff as well. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing, gear we're going to be using. Let's get to our tabletop and then outside. Tabletop Part 1, Night Vision and Thermal Used. Welcome to the tabletop section of our video. Okay, uh, first thing we'll go over is the night vision we're going to be using because I imagine uh, most folks are going to want to know a little bit about that before we get into the material side of things. So, first up we have a Sightmark Wraith. Now this is a digital night vision scope. This particular model has a 4x optical resolution and goes up to, I believe, 32x zoom. Runs on four AA batteries, retails for around $500 with an, uh, with an illuminator, which you're going to need, okay? Uh, digital night vision scopes, for the most part, uh, you're gonna have to use an infrared illuminator for them to be able to function on anything but the brightest night, and this is no different, okay? So Sightmark Wraith 4X model. Next piece of gear we have is a traditional night vision. This happens to be an Armasite Vulcan 3.5X, and this particular Vulcan has a Gen 3 Alpha image tube in it, and it's also manual gain, so you adjust the brightness, which has some advantages. It still has an auto brightness cutout, but it uh, but does have manual gain, which is a nice feature. And although Armasite has been bought out by Fleur, and I don't believe they're even producing anything anymore, uh, you can still find these for roughly uh, what I've seen, about a 2500 retail uh, price point US dollars. And because this is traditional night vision, it doesn't do internal recording, which is what you're going to see from the Wraith. Uh, so what we have is we put a DJI action cam behind it, running 4K resolution, 24 frames a second, gained it up a little bit, and then shot video from the back side of this scope, and then cropped that down into the 1080p video that you're watching. So, uh, Armasite Vulcan 3.5X Gen 3. Now, our last device is a thermal scope. In this case, we have a Bearing Optics Super Hogster. Now, the Super Hogster is Bearing Optics latest model. I don't believe they've come out with anything more recent than this. It came out last year. Now this has a 384 by 288 resolution thermal sensor in it. It, it runs at 50 Hertz, which is a good respectable refresh rate. It's also a 12 micron sensor and because of that smaller sensor it allows a 35 millimeter lens up front to give you 2.9x optical magnification. Okay. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention on this scope is 
I've had I've seen several thermal devices use several thermal devices, and this thing is very sensitive uh, and appears to be uh, actually better than a Fleur PTS 233. Uh, gives you a better sensitivity than a a uh, Leopold Tracker 2 HD. Uh, and from what I've read, this is less than 30 or less than 40 millikelvin. Uh, as far as your sensitivity on it for versus background noise on the sensor, so so this thing's pretty 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 uh, tight, and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go over our materials and get out in the field because I'm going to have to do a bit of a reshoot because of how sensitive this thing is. So uh, bearing optics, Super Hogster, and this retails for about thirty-two hundred dollars, by the way, uh, with the better mount that's on it. So there's our three devices. Uh, Two illuminators, these are basic El Cheapo $50 illuminators of Volva and I believe Unique Fire 850 and or 850 and 940 nanometer. So these two different illuminators we're going to use with the regular night vision. And these do have a big play on how materials show up, whether you're using an illuminator or relying on ambient light. So uh, it is important that we use these and show how things work with and without those for you. So that's it for our gear. Let's do part two of our tabletop and we'll talk about the things we're going to be looking at and using. Tabletop part two, materials tested. Ha ha ha, you can't see me now. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, so here we go. Uh, let's talk about the materials we're going to be using out in the field. Uh, first up, we have some mossy oak. Uh, it's kind of like a Tyvek material, real tree camo. Very dull, flat colors, by the way. You can see I'll put my fingers through it here. Uh, you can see it's kind of got this leafy cutout pattern to it. So it's something you can put on your tree stand or your blind to help make you a little less visible to Bambi or other wildlife while you're out in the field. Kind of matches my shirt pretty good. A little duller, though. Yeah, a little bit duller. But anyway, so real tree camo Tyvek type material. Uh, next up we have a tarp, and where's my sheet of paper? This is a polyethylene tarp, camouflage pattern to it. And this is just a basic cheap big lot, $7, 8 by 10 uh, poly tarp, uh, camouflage. Yeah, let's see how that, we're going to see how that looks at night. Uh, now, uh, some other materials we have. We have some vinyl sheet plastic, okay, this comes in rolls, you just, you know, go to a cloth, cloth or fabric store, or in this case Walmart, and you can get the sheet vinyl, roll it out, have it cut off the length. Now this is the thinnest stuff I could buy at Walmart, and I'll actually, I'll post it up here on the screen somewhere. I'll measure this with a pair of calipers. Uh, I got two different thicknesses of this. I used the thinnest stuff in the field, and I found out that it was a little bit more, uh, didn't block as well as I thought it would, or as well as I could tell uh, with a different piece of thermal equipment, and I'll talk about that uh, maybe out in the field. But uh, anyway, so I'll do another test and insert some more footage with a little bit thicker material, but we'll be playing with some vinyl sheet plastic. Okay, uh, more vinyl, this time uh, your three-pack value table covers, like what you would like to put on your table prior to having a four-year-old's birthday party where lots of mess to ensue that you just want to roll up and throw away when you're done. Uh, so we're going to be using this and seeing how this shows up in night vision, as well as thermal, and you'll be a little bit surprised there. Okay, another tablecloth. Now in this case a Mylar style or metallic looking tablecloth. And this has a textured, uh, an actual texture to it. It's not just 100% smooth. $3 at Walmart, and I will tell you there is a lot of bang for the buck in thermal use for, for this. So uh, you'll be surprised out in the field. And we'll combine these two together to help work across the board. Uh, lastly, we have a Don't Die Alone, or no, I'm sorry, not Don't Die Alone, just Don't Die in the Woods emergency blanket. Now, a lot of people put these in their backpacks, you know, four, five, ten dollars, whatever you want to spend for them. Uh, yeah, I, they're not a bad thing to have. In this case, uh, this, this particular one is the same thin, thin, uber thin material. Uh, silver metallic on one side, olive drab green look to the other. And yeah, this is about, you'll never get it back in the pack once you open it. So uh, yeah, hence the storing it in a Ziploc now. 
things I do for this channel. Uh, so anyway, we'll be showing how well these work and how these can hinder uh, being rescued if you ever have to use one. So good stuff there. Uh, last thing, clothing, okay? Uh, now I didn't bring it in here, but I have, uh, my son is going to be out in the field, and he's an adult, okay, no minors in this video. Uh, he's going to be out in the field, and he's going to be strutting his stuff wearing some camouflage. Uh, in this case, we have uh, uh, military camouflage, woodland pattern. Uh, the shirt he's going to be wearing is 100% cotton, it's the thinner uh, ripstop type of cotton material then the pants are going to be the same, or trousers are going to be the same pattern, only they're going to be the 50% nylon, 50% cotton material to see if that makes a difference in night vision with illuminators and all that. So he'll be wearing both of those, and then underneath we'll do a brief, and I may show you a better shot of this, which is, this is a real tree, mossy oak real tree, Camouflage shirt. Now this is 95% uh, polyester, 5% spandex. It also is supposed to have some stuff to make the bugs not like it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so we'll be showing how this looks. And this is another point that you're going to want to pay attention to is that how this looks under ambient lighting versus an illuminator is dramatically different. So uh, something else to pay attention to. Uh, and the one last thing is he's going to be wearing a helmet with a face shield. The face shield is just a standard impact resistant face shield like you might get at Lowe's or Home Depot or something uh, used to weed eat or, or, or you know sand or grind or whatever. And, uh, and you're going to see how well that abates uh, your thermal and stuff like that as well. So uh, the helmet by the way is actually a piece of stuff we made for cosplay using the face shield so uh, if you wonder about that yeah it's not nothing fancy it's just a cosplay deal so there you have it that's all the materials we're going to be using uh, we talked about the night vision we're going to be using and how we recorded it so let's get out and do the fun stuff in the field range testing intro okay uh, a quick note before we show the range footage and the footage that I'm going to be shooting later on uh, here uh, with some extra goodies. When you're looking at the footage that's about to be shown, some of the footage on the bearing uh, therm for the thermal stuff, the bearing optics of Super Hogster, is going to have some some spots where the video just glitches, locks up, and then starts back again. Now there's that's not a knuck. That is an actual flaw that I'm having, an issue that I'm having with this bearing and optics at this time. Okay, now uh, I've had a couple calls to uh, bearing optics, and I talked to them today, and they're supposed to be giving me a uh, a shipping label to send it back, and they'll either replace it or get the issue resolved and send it back to me. Okay, uh, but you're going to notice that in the video. That's not normal, and uh, and I'll let you know in the comments or I'll post some remarks down below the, uh, in the video remarks once I get this situation or as it gets resolved to let you know what my customer service experience has been with bearing optics okay I've never had to deal with their customer service or as a company until now so uh, I'll let you know how all that goes and there will be a review on the Super Hogster and I'll probably cover all that as a part of the review because hey that's that's part of a review is uh, did you have any customer service how'd it go so anyway enough of that let's uh, let's get out to the range range testing part one mossy oak camouflage and camouflage clothing okay so here we are out in the field uh, we're at my favorite range and what you're looking at is uh, on at least two out of the three devices here okay first off we've got video rolling on our thermal, on our Gen 3 Alpha Armasite Vulcan 3.5X it's traditional night vision scope, manual gain, and in our on our sight mark rate in currently in night mode. Okay, so all three of these are rolling. What you see at 30 yards out uh, in the center of your view is uh, is our mossy oak kind of textured, leafy looking. Uh, camouflage and basically it's just a sheet that's got punch outs that are kind of like the leaves so kind of it's open and you can see through it a little bit okay and behind that is my son my adult son okay YouTube adult son okay all adults in this video no kids so 
So my son's back there, and as you can see at this point in time, uh, you can see him through the camouflage or his heat signature wherever there's gaps in that camouflage. Of course, uh, right now the traditional night vision, that camouflage is, just looks like a, whatever else, like foliage or like an object out there. No real tattletale reflection. And through the sight mark race at this time, we are seeing pitch black, okay? So, and this is a starlit night, by the way. We have no moonlight, no incidental. Now, I'm gonna go ahead before I have my son step out. We're going to go ahead and turn on an 850 illuminator. And now we have our 850 illuminator on and and I'm uh, focusing it in and out a little bit here. Now, of course, the thermal doesn't give a hoot about any illuminator. Uh, now, you can see this 850. Let me see what power level I'm on here. A little bit of glare in the screen. Okay, that's on low right now. So 850 on low and focused, it's still overwhelming our night vision, which I have manual gain on it, and the manual gain is all the way up. So, But I can't actually dial down that manual gain, okay? To give you a much better clarity and no washout okay so let's uh we'll crank our gain up a little bit i'm looking through the wraith now and uh, through the wraith you can see the camouflage very well and i'm going to go ahead and widen out this field of view to cover the full regular night vision on low now with the regular night vision of course i can play to give me uh, different this is a, a manual gain so I can actually dial it in to give me the best contrast which I have, I have it dialed down a little bit and again that's on low now on low widened out like that the wraith is non-functional so let me bump this up a notch and go to medium okay we're now on medium on our 850 illuminator and I still don't have really enough light for the Wraith to function. Okay, now I have it on high, and the Wraith has a borderline grainy image because I have the dispersion too wide for it to function. Of course, all this time as I'm making all these changes, absolutely no difference in our uh, thermal view. So let's go ahead and let me get it to where we can actually see a little better. I'll zoom in a little bit and get this to where the wraith can actually function. And now, if you'll notice, okay, with this illuminator on, Odin, move around behind the uh, thing. Okay, you can see my son moving around behind there where this infrared light is reflecting off of his clothing. Uh, now, uh, hang on, let me dial this down on the uh, traditional night vision gain. Okay, move around a little more again. Up, oh, I see, I see hands. Okay. So there you have it. So that's just, right, right now we're just looking at the mossy oak, kind of leafy camouflage. How does it work for night vision and digital night vision if you have enough extra light out there, right? And it does work. So, okay, uh, the next thing I wanted to do is uh, have my son go ahead and step out. Now, the clothing he has on right now he has on some nylon or some gloves that have some actually reflective material on them. He's wearing a camouflage shirt, military camouflage, woodland camo, uh, it's called a jacket, but a shirt that is 100% cotton camouflage pattern. And he has on camouflage pants, woodland camo, military. And this is older stuff, none of this digital stuff. This is all from the mid to late 90s. And, uh, and the camo pants... Hey, come on and step around in front of the blind. The camo pants are 50% nylon and 50% polyester. So, okay, you want to turn off your light? Or is that just your gloves reflecting? Oh, that's, that's just your gloves. Holy smokes. I'm reflecting off our 850 illuminator. Okay, so my son's behind, or in front of it now, and you can see... Really, actually, both of those, I'm looking on the Wraith, and both of those work the same. Boy, those gloves are super, super reflective. And he's got, uh, he's got one of our sci-fi helmets we made for, like, cosplay. 
And we're going to put that on because we want to see how that hides the thermal. Now, thermal, he's sticking out very well because his heat's radiating through the body. So uh, he's got his glasses on, so you see dark spots on his face from his glasses and the headlamp. You got that headlamp on still, don't you? Okay. So now, if you're looking at it, the helmet itself is not allowing his thermal signature, and that's just a standard protective face shield, but you'll see where he's breathing is rapidly warming up the acrylic, okay? So something like that would work, but again, uh, as the acrylic heats up, it is going to reflect or radiate the heat uh, from heat from, from just from him breathing, okay? So, hey, hey, take off your gloves, please. Those are like blinding this night vision. God, goodness gracious. Okay, so now what I'm really not seeing is it's kind of amazing is I figured that the polyester uh, would actually look a little different here and show up where the, uh, where the cotton wouldn't under the IR light. So I'm gonna turn off the IR light and of course, the Wraith is now blind because it's being a digital, it needs that extra light. Okay, so I've got the gain all the way up. And under ambient conditions, this is what you're going to see wearing camo. Uh, do you want to walk towards your camera? You can take the helmet off if you want. I know that thing's kind of a pain. So, that's with our 840. Now what I'm going to do is... Uh, Go ahead and hang out there for a second, if you will. Okay, now I just turned on our 940 illuminator. And uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, you can see that in some of the uh, different gear, the, and I'm reaching around here, so let's see. One, two, that seems to be high. And let me focus the Wraith a little bit here. So that's the 940 with this Wraith. And I should have it on high, but I think it's spread out wide illumination. I'm running around looking at three devices here all at the same time. So maybe not that much light usable for the... For the Wraith when it's diffused. Okay, so it looks like we've got enough light to see through the Wraith here. I'm bouncing back and forth on my test rig here. And again, even, even then the 50 Kali, 50 pot and military uniform, while it does illuminate and stand out, I mean, that's woodland green. Okay, so looking off into the woodland greens, uh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be lit up a, a little bit here. So uh, let me go ahead and adjust the brightness on our... Okay, if you want to go back behind... Oh, wait, before you do that, do me a favor, uh, unbutton... And unbutton your shirt and show off that nice uh, real tree nylon spandex camo. So now this is military camo that he's that we have on right now. And he's unbuttoned the shirt, so okay. Now if you'll notice that looks white, okay, and that's that's real tree, that's a real tree camo shirt, okay. And let me see what the see what T Wraith is looking at here. So you can see that looks Blatantly white. So there's the difference between 100% cotton camo. I'll pan down a little bit so the Wraith can see. There's your cotton nylon camo. And that is just your nylon spandex. Even though it's a, a green woodland color pattern, it looks white. So let's go ahead and switch illuminators just so we can demonstrate both of those and show that these nylon type materials are, uh, and I think I got this way high up. There's low, medium, high, low. Low's enough right now. And uh, let me widen this out a little bit. So there's low. And let me dial down the, uh, this is on the 850 now. Dial down a traditional night vision. So you can see, yeah, materials matter. So if you're wearing a synthetic camouflage and expect it to have any effect, okay, good to go, uh, have any effect on the, uh, on night vision it's it's not I mean you're gonna see it's gonna glow white and uh, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb so uh, 
So there's a demonstration of some camouflage, different camouflaged attire. Uh, we've demonstrated it like an acrylic, you know, uh, face shield like you'd wear to protect from flying debris while you're grinding or something like that. Hey, yeah, that's going to prevent a thermal signal from getting through. But, uh, but by the same token, it's going to heat up and then you're going to, uh, once it's heated up, you're actually going to, you're going to see a thermal signal, although it's not going to be quite what you were expecting. And by the way, the uh, just so you know, okay, the thermal we're looking at has a 2.9x magnification. This is a Super Hogster uh, 35. Uh, our Gen 3 is an Armasite Vulcan 3.5x Gen 3. And then the Site Mark uh, Wraith is a digital, and it's 4x native magnification. And we've not zoomed in, so that just gives you 2.9, 3.5, and 4. And there's a huge difference between the 3.5 and 4. So, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to pause. And uh, then we're going to go and we're going to change our backstop out to see, hey, what's, what's, what's some other options we have that might be good for you to be able to kind of camouflage yourself against night vision and illuminators and uh and thermal so uh, we'll be right back we'll go ahead and pause recording on all of these devices and be back in a few minutes range testing part two polyethylene tarp and clear vinyl okay so uh now we've got my my son's down there behind odin's behind our second choice for blind now what you're looking at or what we are looking at is just a basic uh, cheap you know cheap tarp now this is a camouflaged tarp so that it has a cab you know cam woodland camouflage pattern big lots just a pot believe it's polyethylene if that's right I'll post it on here what the material is uh, basically a basic camouflage tarp and of course no illuminators nothing can see nothing so let's go ahead and turn on an illuminator we've got our 850 on and let me cycle through to get power levels here. Low, medium. Okay, we should have our 850 on high. And I'm gonna, I did have the, uh, oops. Don't need a lot of gain on the, uh, actually gain down a little bit on the uh, traditional night vision. Okay, so my son's behind there. Now you can tell we've actually got two layers. Okay, we've got our camouflage tarp and it's holding up well under the 850. It's not bled out into uh, some mishmash of uh, just white. And this wraith is aimed just a little bit different. So, and now my son is behind that. And what you'll you see all these reflections up up high, right? And what those are all coming from is just thin that thin sheet vinyl that we talked about in our tabletop uh, that is there to basically. It won't shield night vision, obviously, and then because it's a, a reflective surface, it will reflect these IR illuminators. But uh, but looking at it, you can see my son standing behind her. Hey, walk out, walk out, and back, walk across the the backstop or the the blind uh, from left to right a couple times. So there's the difference, right, in, in thermal. So uh, realistically. If, if if somebody was there and you could you could recognize somebody now this is this thermal is a pretty sensitive thermal too okay cool uh if you would take off your glove one of your gloves and let's and and uh, go behind uh blind and just kind of rest it up against the tarp or just so we can see uh how rapidly okay so there's a handprint on the vinyl okay do the tarp down below okay so yeah See how fast that thermal is okay and uh and how long it lingers okay wow holy smokes <laughs> so so okay now and interestingly now that's the thinnest vinyl i could get as far as uh and i probably should have brought the other roll but i didn't they had like three thicknesses when i went to walmart and got the sheet vinyl this is the thinnest that i bought uh or the thinnest out of the three and i also have the thickest which is uh you can tell there's a appreciable thickness more and uh maybe we'll do an, just an indoor demo with the thermal on that because uh yeah i think if we had a little bit thicker vinyl then that would probably work a hundred percent for thermal however not so good with night vision so let's go ahead with these two materials 
turn the nine or the 850 off. Let's turn our 940 illuminator on and kind of focus that in a little bit. We'll see if uh, should have it on high. And okay, so the camouflage looks camouflaged. And let me focus this wraith a little bit. If I, I think I focused it uh, earlier up closer. So okay, so the camouflage still looks camouflaged uh, in the wraith. And, and you know, I haven't switched to green. Let's give the green people, the greenies, uh, a look at green. Uh, yeah, so there's green. Uh, my son's inside. It looks like he's actually fogging it up a little bit, don't it? And there's day mode on the race and cycle back to our most effective uh, grayscale night vision. So there's our 850 illuminator on, uh, demonstrating these same thing or 940. I'm sorry, but let me go ahead and dial this up and or dial down again a little bit. And so there's our 940. I'll widen this out for benefits of traditional night vision. And so there's a. 940 and let's see low so now 940 on low and we have more than adequate light for uh, our traditional night vision to be super super bright image quality uh, even out to, you know even going out to 100 yards say and this is just this is a starlit night like I said before no cloud cover uh, anything so okay And that should be high. And can the race see anything? Very, very little, but it can see the reflection. It doesn't do so well. Needs this, as you can tell, either way, the race needs significant, significantly more light than our traditional night vision. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do, we've got a few more materials to test here. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off the recording on these. So uh, power everything down, save a little bit of battery time here. Range Testing Part 3 Metallic and Vinyl Tablecloths uh, We have our next round of materials to take a look at uh, what helps you hide and uh, which you'll notice a lot of reflections on the bottom and, and right now I just have I just have my old uh, regular old LED flashlight shining down here so let me turn that off and We'll gain up fully on our night vision and on the bottom we have right now we have our reflective tablecloth and that's a light blue or a medium blue reflective like a mylar looking tablecloth for a couple bucks very thin material almost like a uh, emergency blanket uh, that you've seen the mylar emergency blankets and then on the top we have our black plastic vinyl very thin vinyl almost like a trash bag material uh, type of uh, plastic tablecloth. So, uh, as you can see, through the thermal right now, you can see my son very, very readily through the uh, through that tablecloth. Although it's opaque to night vision. So, let's go ahead and turn on illuminator because poor old Rafe can't see nothing right now. So I just powered on the 850 illuminator, and let's go ahead and roll it up. If I get it on low, oh, medium. Okay, we've got it on high, and yeah, let me just kind of get this thing aimed a little better. Maybe widen out just a little bit. Okay, so uh, night vision, as you can see, uh, the black plastic is opaque. The, ref the, the metallic plastic uh, is, well, it's metallic looking. And, of course, the wraith is not getting a good view of this. And, wow, I need to actually, do I need to? I need to make sure I'm on high and maybe I need to focus here. Uh, oh, medium high. Okay, I'm on high. And, uh, sorry, I can't get everything all happy at the same time. Okay, I am focusing. And there is our there's our black tablecloth in the wraith. And there's our metallic uh, down below. And, of course, this is way too much light for the Gen 3, so let's... Oops, I'm cranking my cranking right thing down. Well, I've got now I've got the game cranked all the way down on the regular night vision. Let's go ahead and aim this a little better. And again, the cheap illuminators are going to have some whatever. Now I can bump up the uh, traditional night vision. I just barely have the gain up on the Gen 3. 
So, okay, that's uh, that. And you can still see my set. Okay, I'm going to have him take his gloves off, and I'm going to have him touch this mylar, or this metallic foil uh, material, and see if his heat shows through on this $3 tablecloth. You want to take your glove off and put your... Uh, Put it up against the, uh, the the silver or the foil uh, tablecloth. Let's just see what we see. Are you touching it? Yeah. Hold you. Stick your hand out to the side from where you're touching it, so we can see. Okay, go down lower and touch it. Uh, touch just the yeah, touch the tablecloth. Okay, and I'm, I'm waiting to... Okay, hold, go, go, go down to the center center bottom and let's just... Uh, I want I just want to give it a minute. Push it out so I can see where your hand, hand's at. Okay. And yeah, we're, get, we're getting nothing thermally. And it should have showed through. As thin as that is, it should have showed through immediately. Okay. So, okay, yeah, $3. Okay, cool, thanks. So a $3... Uh, reflective foil tablecloth uh, defeats thermal even touching it from the inside uh, pretty much and this thermal like you saw as you've seen is pretty sensitive to what it can see through so uh, wow uh, that's pretty impressive so we'll go ahead and do one more thing I'm going to turn off the uh, 850 turn on the 940 so we can get uh, let me bump up Okay, so there's our 940, same two materials, and it's on high, and again, the, the, you're, what you're seeing with the metallic stuff is, uh, you're seeing just a reflection of the light in their standard night vision, and uh, of course, I imagine if we, uh, if you had something reflective in front of this metallic uh, tablecloth, then it could reflect the light from somebody back as a as a metallic surface would and that's one of the reasons i picked up a textured one to kind of help diffuse anything the thermal might actually get a reflection of so okay there you have it uh there's our our, our standard uh cheap vinyl tablecloth and our metallic tablecloth three dollar tablecloth and it's pretty good at blocking thermal so let's let's go ahead and do uh We'll do one other thing here, and uh, well, actually, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a couple other things. We're gonna put this black pla pla uh, black plastic tablecloth in front of the mylar looking tablecloth, and see if that actually gives a good barrier. Even if uh, even if we put some heat up against the backside, if that will if that effectively will give you maybe the best solution for hiding from both. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll pause this. We'll do that, and I do have the, an emergency blanket. And, uh, and I will unravel that and put that up on the top so we'll kill these last two birds with one stone. And I think that'll be it for kind of demonstrating what works to show off and, and not <laughs> different, uh, different visibility levels with night vision and uh, for different ways to kind of mask your signatures. Range testing part four, survival blanket and vinyl over metallic tablecloth. Okay, so here we are, we're back, our last segment. And in this segment, basically, uh, what you're looking at is on, on the bottom of our tarp, let me turn off this uh, little light here, uh, we do have our 850 illuminator on to brighten things up and adjustments made to our night vision so it can handle all that copious amounts of light. Uh, in the meantime, the wraith can see very well. So, so anyway, uh, while we're talking about this, what we have now is we have our foil tablecloth down below and that tablecloth now has the black tablecloth the plastic one in front of the metallic foil tablecloth and up top we have our don't die in the woods emergency blanket which is a mylar type of blanket heat reflective blanket uh, again and it's just as thin maybe even a little thinner than the dang uh than the table tablecloth is uh, but metallic and it's a smooth metallic not crinkled so as you can see we're getting a huge amount of reflection on everything okay on that uh, on the don't die in the woods blanket uh, 
little bar it looks like a series of stripes in the thermal and that's basically all where it was folded and creased and the black you're seeing is where it's where that happens to be a reflection of the night sky which is of course dark black color or without any heat so uh yeah that is showing up and you're getting a hell of a reflection from your infrared illuminators looking through either one of these other devices and of course the green color doesn't matter it's just a very thin layer anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and turn off the illuminator real quick and find the gain now let's go ahead and gain up in our traditional night vision uh so there there's just ambient starlight night starlit night and again if this is a starlit night it's clear uh the moon will be up around midnight or so maybe uh yeah, the midnight, the, the midnight will be moon rise, and it's not going. It's only like seventy-eight percent, and it won't get very high. But but we're not there yet, okay? As a matter of fact, uh, let me look if I can see what time it is actually here. Okay, it's only nine fifty-four, so we're a couple hours away from moon rise and well after sunset. So anyway, so here we are. Now there's your there's your night vision view and your thermal view, without an illuminator, just ambient light, and yeah, that even the don't die in the woods tarp is kind of showing up pretty good there and my son is behind there so you're not seeing any thermal thermal through that emergency tarp okay so matter of fact i think that's him hobgoblining behind the uh, tarp moving it but uh and then on the bottom we've got our, our our we've got our metallic cheap metallic tablecloth with a cheaper three pack one of the uh thin black plastic in front of it now the one thing I do want to do is I'm going to have my son take off his gloves and put his hands up against both the Don't Die in the, uh, Alone in the Woods uh, Mylar blanket, emergency blanket, and the bottom one. Now, if you remember when he put his hand up against that metallic tablecloth, you really didn't see anything before, but check this out. Okay, hey, you want to put your uh, hand up against the bottom uh, without a glove? Okay, and you can see his handprint is showing through on the black plastic. Now, uh, okay, go ahead and put it behind the uh, emergency blanket up top. Oh. And as you can see, that's not his hand is in the center. That's where he actually lifted it up. His hand's up higher, but nothing through the emergency blanket. And uh, the Mylar blanket held so little heat down below that his signature is already gone to the bottom. Okay. Uh, I think that's a, about it. I'm going to go ahead and do a little yap and, and then we're done, okay? So. Okay, I don't know if I'm in frame or how well I'm in frame. I'm thinking I'm in frame. Uh, so, hey, I hope you enjoyed our Don't Get Caught in the Dark video. And, uh, and really, I, I did this kind of tongue-in-cheek for fun just because it's neat to see how infrared light reflects, reflect, reflects and gets absorbed by different materials and the same thing with thermal signatures and since I'm a bit of an optics geek in the first place hey I just enjoy playing with this stuff but, but the reality of it is is okay for practical purposes if you need to kind of hide from thermal uh, for whatever reason yeah you can do it. you can see you can do it fairly cheap okay but there are caveats that are gonna that are gonna uh, change the dynamics of all that by the same token, even more importantly, is if you're out in the woods or you're out hunting with some buddies and you have night vision and you're using illuminators, especially if it's like Gen 1 or Gen 2 where you're going to need illuminators a lot, hey, you know, wear a ball cap that's nylon or something that's going to stand out so that your buddies see you and don't mistake you for something that is a target, okay? That's a, a good thing, okay? Uh, if you're lost in the woods and search parties are looking for you, those little emergency blankets are great, but keep in mind that a drone with a thermal camera is not going to be able to see you worth a crap. Maybe your head or whatever is not exposed, but if you're all huddled up, that thermal blanket is going to mask your signature, which isn't what you want. So, uh, yeah, lots of ins and outs. Sometimes you want to be seen, sometimes you don't. And we just went over a bunch of different materials and how they actually work with thermal night vision and digital night vision with and without illuminators to give you a better idea how that, how that stuff comes together. So I uh, hope you enjoyed watching our Don't Get Caught in the Dark video and uh, until next time.
Vinyl Redux with FLIR PTS-233 and Loophole Tracker 2 HD. Okay, so uh, here's our, our insert, our add-in bonus footage, as you want to call it, if you want to call it that. Of course, obviously, we're not at the range, we're in my backyard. But uh, when we were at the range, our thinner sheet plastic that I thought was going to block the thermal and blocked it fairly well didn't block it as well as I had hoped. Uh, so what we're doing now is we're going to regroup on that. We have two different thicknesses of sheet plastic. I had thinner stuff that night at the range. I've got that and some thicker stuff hanging up. You can see it hanging down here behind me and we'll show you, we'll zoom in on that in just a minute. And uh, we're going to compare three different thermal devices for how well they can pick up a very light signature coming through that plastic and if the thicker stuff blocks it completely from all from from several devices so that's what we're going to do let's go ahead and zoom in on the plastic then zoom in on these uh, devices and we'll talk about them real quick and then we'll come back as soon as the uh, sun gets down and it's dark out so okay our sheet plastic is uh, down here on the left is uh, the thicker stuff and that is what we did not use at the range and it measured at 0 0.0145 uh, inches or 14 and a half thousandths thickness and the stuff we were using at the range uh, was a little bit thinner and that measured at 0 0.0105 or 10 and a half thousandths so literally we've got two sheet plastics and the thicker stuff we're going to be also testing this evening or now is uh, is about 40 to 50 percent again thicker than what we had originally and of course you can double this over and depending on how this stuff looks we might even double some of it over to see hey just what would you really need to to where the thermal can't see through that uh, so that's the sheet plastic now let's uh let's go ahead and uh i'm going to zoom out here and we're going to show i'll show you the devices we're going to use here okay uh <clears throat> three devices and uh, of course the, the the higher the best device that we have is this bearing optic super hogster which is to me very capable highly sensitive very good signal to noise it will it can pull details out I think when a lot of other devices can't okay at least from my experience so uh, I really do like like the the image quality coming out of that so uh, we have that we also have a FLIR PTS 233 now, before Floor quit making thermal scopes, this would have been their entry-level scope. It would have retailed for around $2,000, $2,200, has a, a 12 micron core in it, uh, about 1.4, 1.6x magnification, not a, not a uh, focusable lens, though, a fixed lens, which is a detractor from this particular unit. But uh, again, this was a, a, a pretty capable 60 hertz, uh, 60 hertz unit. So. Uh, we're going to take a look at that, but, and I don't, you know, FLIR didn't really publish their sensitivity specs on the sensor, but uh, this does not have, even though it's a 12 micron core, I think it's a Boson core in here, I don't think it has the sensitivity in the signal to noise processing that the bearing optics does. But we're going to actually see that side by side in this video. And lastly, we have a Leopold Tracker 2 HD, which is a handheld tracking device. Leopold discontinued these as well. And it's 320 by 240, I believe 25 hertz frame rate, 12 micron core, did I say that? Uh, and we have our magnification assembly on the back that allows it to be looked at through a monocular for people with old eyes like myself. And, uh, and a DJI Osmo action cam recording at 4K behind that. So uh, when we're looking through this, keep in mind that the tracker the, you're going to have some distortion in the rectangular image when you're just doing a no magnification and fringe distortion when we zoom in. That's because of this add-on lens assembly that I have and the DJI Osmo because without, without, the, without it set up the way that it is, I'd have to set this thing so far out that I wouldn't be able to get a decent image of the screen uh, because this thing doesn't really have a focus ability so much. Uh, so anyway, so there you have it, three devices. Uh, let's let it get dark and then take a look at the sheet plastic and see how we stand out or how well you can see us or not.
So, okay, uh, we're out here. It's prime 45, 50 degrees out. Chilly night. And uh, we're looking at our sheet plastic hanging up on the uh, Tracker 2 HD. And I do have that. It's not a native resolution. It's zoomed in uh, the second step up goes 1.7 and maybe 2.5 or something. I'll correct it if that's wrong. Uh, bearing optics were at our native almost 3x resolution. And the floor were at our native 1.6x resolution. And uh, let's go down here and see how these two sheets of plastic uh, work. Okay, so that's the two sheets of plastic, uh, thick, on the, thick on your left, thin on the right, and that's uh, 14 and a half thousandths on the thick and 10.5 thousandths on the uh, thin. Not sure if I'm in frame all the way or not here. Uh, no way to kind of tell. But uh, anyway, so that's with just single sheets. Now, I don't know how this looked because I'm walking out, walking back. So I have no idea how this footage is coming out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk down there and I'm going to fold these, these sheets of plastic from the bottom up and double their thickness. And it'll, it'll just be kind of like, you know, there'll be some airspace between them, but it'll have double the layer uh, between me and these uh, thermal devices. So we'll effectively, we'll be doubling both sides of that. And then we'll do some, we'll test that real quick just to see there and uh, that'll give an idea how much uh, clear vinyl actually will uh, defeat different devices uh, or inhibit you from being able to see what's behind them.
Okay, uh, I think I'm in frame. Might be cutting my head off. I don't know here. So, okay, so that's it. Uh, that's it for our playing with sheet plastic. Again, uh, we just did double layers of sheet plastic. Uh, again, that's just kind of folded, and that stuff's kind of hard to fold and manipulate when it's cold out like this. It gets stiff. So, uh, so not the maybe not the best layering or like you would fabricate something, but. Uh, two layers of each versus the one layer we had just a minute or two ago. So that's it. Uh, with that, we'll shut this down and go back to our regularly scheduled programming. I hope you enjoyed our Don't Get Caught in the Dark video. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it's free for download for personal or educational use, please link and give credit. Commercial use of this video is expressly forbidden without consent. Thanks for watching.